What's going on, YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and it's time for week five of the Indigo League of Legends up against uh, Mac and the Respiro City Stoners. It's time to have a, I guess this is an, a rematch in a way. When we had that other match before, it didn't really count for the season, so that was more of a preseason thing. But I got some valuable information about how he was going to play his team. Oh, we did both end up bringing kind of different uh, ideas to this match. Whereas my main changes were Lipard and Latios. Of course, Latios was a Pokemon I picked up for my next minor pick. Uh, I had him subbed in for this for this week. Uh, Mac had access to things like Tornadus T, and of course he still had the dual weather sweepers between Kingdra and Stoutland, uh, and most notably his other minor pick was Cobalion. Uh, I did expect him to bring Scarf Cobalion just because it's a solid check to Aurorus. But between Lipart and Latios, and to a lesser extent Fortress, I wasn't as worried about it. Um, I did not expect him to have Arcanine, uh, and I, go, looking at the team preview, I was worried about Scarf Cobalion and Scarf Arcanine. I didn't think he would have both, but it did depend on which one he had, how I was going to go about checking his team, because both of them were very possible. Because they both get fighting coverage to check Scarf Aurorus, and then they both get coverage to also check my Charizard Y. I was surprised to see that he didn't have his own Charizard X, but based on how it kind of performed when he brought it before, I can see why I didn't bring it. Uh, I was very, very pleased to not see Meowstic or Kingdra alongside uh, Tornadus or any of those Pokemon, so I was I was lucky my chances here. One of the other newer things that I brought was a Calm Mind, Life Orb, Draco Meteor, Psyshock Roost, Latios, uh, just to really apply pressures to his team, because after a Calm Mind, I had a good chance to Chaos Forges after Stealth Ross with Psyshock. Um, and then after that, even if he has Scarf Cobalion, he can one hit Kehomi with anything, and he might have Hidden Power Ice, but after a Calm Mind, it doesn't really matter. So, I like my matchup going into this. Let's just see how it played out. I actually led off with Aurorus, expecting him to lead a Powdon, uh, but that didn't work out. So, we just switched directly onto my um, Fortress here, expecting him to go for close combat right away. And he could have gone for Volt Switch, uh, maybe even had Hidden Power Fire, but I wasn't worried about that. I did have Overcoat on Fortress this time instead of Sturdy, just so that my own Hail wouldn't damage me. And here I get to get up my Stealth Rocks really early in the battle, so that's very nice. I did predict him to go for either Wild Charge or Flare Blitz. Wild Charge would be expecting my uh, Charizard to come in and take a Fire-type move. He actually went for Hidden Power Rock, so that was a solid switch in the switch in my Empor here, because... If he is Scarfed, then he has to switch out, basically. And if he's not Scarfed, Flare Bliss is still going to hurt a good bit. Uh, Arcanine doesn't really get any notable coverage on Embor. And I do get to surprise the on here with Grass Knot, taking it out before he has an opportunity to take out my Embor. I have Sucker Punch, but uh, it's just Expert Belt, so I, I wanted to save my Embor just in case. Um, because Pokemon is a fair and balanced game, he misses Fire Fang as I bring in my Fortress. And then, as I try to set up Toxic Spikes, he flinches me. So, um, the miss didn't matter in the sense that uh, if he wanted one more turn to use Sand, he would have had that. But it, it didn't really matter because if he had one more turn of Sand, then I would just go out into Aurora's and click Blizzard for the most part. Uh, I Also, since he has everything grounded, I could have just clicked Earth Power and done that. So, um... This is why I do carry Flamethrower on Wildfire over Fire Blast, because I don't want to miss a thing. I don't want to miss Fire Blast in these conditions, because that can prove very, very uh, momentous as far as a loss of momentum goes. I knew he was going to switch on into Forges here, but I had a really good chance to one-hit KO with uh, Life Orb, Psy Shock boosted, plus one. Barely miss out on that, just ever so barely, but fortunately when I do get the plus one on my special defense side, I can easily take a Moonblast, uh, barring something weird like Choice Specs, Florges. Uh, but he does stall out my son by going for Protect here. He still doesn't have anything to switch in, really. Even if he switches in Reuniclus, Psy Shock plus Draco Meteor with a Life Orb boost, that's going to be the end of Reuniclus. Uh, I was still worried about a possible Choice Scarf Arcanine, even though... At this point, I know his his um, his item is Life Orb because I saw a Life Orb earlier, but it's like, what if, the, I don't know, something weird could happen and he outspeeds me, but there was no reason to risk that as far as him hitting me with extreme speed. Uh, 
And so I just went on to Aurorus there. I could have locked in the Blizzard because I had a good chance to KO Ar an offensive Arcanine from that range. But in case he switched into Cobalion, I just didn't want to risk that. So Earth Power was the better lock in there. And there, here we just see how much damage Draco Meteor does, completely obliterating what is likely an offensive Reuniclus. Um, and then his last Pokemon is Cobalion. And while I could have just switched directly out here into Lipard, who could have taken a Stone Edge and then paralyzed him back, and then I would have had a 2-0 differential, I didn't want to risk him going for a close combat because I did need to paralyze uh, Cobalion just to bar any crit scenario or anything weird like that. I needed to paralyze it. Um, now, we do have a really odd situation where I copycat his Stone Edge. I'm just getting some chip damage off here because I don't want to switch Charizard in. And we both miss. We we both miss a couple of stone edges, so that was kind of weird, but that's why a stone miss. That's why I carry Flamethrower over Fire Blast in this scenario, because Modest helps mix up, make up for the power difference, and I don't want to miss a thing at the end of the day. So, thank you very much, Mac, for the battle. Be sure to go check out his channel for his side of the battle, which I'm sure will be up at this point, because I'm uploading this really, really late. Um, what else is going on? If you haven't checked it out too. I have a Poke blog up about Spenda. That's right, I'm back to writing. So I will leave a link to that in the description too. And I do hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. You will probably be seeing this match on Friday. And my next opponent is Wamar, or WMR. And I will do my darndest to get that battle video up, up on time as well. So look forward to that. And in the meantime, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye guys.